Good morning, everyone. I was giving instructions as soon as I see my picture and photo on the uh, screen. I must stand up uh, to address you. Program director, honorable mayors and heads of uh, delegations, your excellencies, distinguished guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the city of Johannesburg, I wish to convey my deepest gratitude to the conveners of this all-important forum for inviting us as a city of Johannesburg to this event. Increasingly, cities are being called upon to assume greater responsibilities on matters that were previously deemed the exclusive terrain of national governments. I'm glad that this anomaly is being corrected as to allow cities like Johannesburg and Copenhagen and others to assume the rightful place as we race again time to reverse the negative effects of climate change and environmental degradation. The world, as you all know, today is grappling with the movement of large numbers of people to urban areas, all in search of better economic opportunities. This phenomenon, as to the difficulty of capacitating cities to be able to move towards a future without waste. All cities Africa, across Africa are not immune to this. Between 2020 and 2050, Africa will be the fastest urbanizing region in the world. Currently, 63% of South Africans live in cities, and by 2030, 71% of our population will be living in the major metropoles. What this means is that uh, those African cities that are presently buckling under pressure will see increased demands on their infrastructure and services that they provide to the residents. As the city of Johannesburg that I lead, we recognize that bold design and the development of sustainable urban solutions has to take place if we are to meet the demands of our urbanized metropolis. If our bustling cities are to stand up to the challenge of waste management. So we have to find innovative ways to better manage the urban environment in addition to rolling out environmentally friendly solutions we speak to sustainable urban development. Ladies and gentlemen, it never ceases to amaze me how the most effective solutions, even so complex and highly technical, are often the most simplest. More often than not, the solution we seek are found in our residents. But no city can achieve any success without the vital inputs of its residents. That is why within a few months of having taken office after the 2016 local government elections in South Africa and uh, being uh, sworn in as the first executive mayor out, uh, since the, new, uh, the dawn with a new political party, we introduced the cleanup campaign called Arisebetzing. Arisebetzing is about creating a spirit of voluntarism. It is about creating a culture of giving of oneself, not for financial reward, but for the purpose of feeling a sense of pride in the fact that you, as an individual, can make a contribution to society. It is about feeling a sense of pride to, to claim every inch of South Africa as your own, irrespective of whether you live there or not. Arisa Beteng is meant to inspire entire communities to take true ownership of their city, their country, and indeed, their lives. Arisa Beteng is intended to be the spark that would trigger a glorious blaze of active citizenship. Arisa Beteng, which in Sesotho, which is one of the languages in South Africa, means let us work, takes place on the third Saturday of each month, closely modeled after Rwanda's Umuganda. Through Arisebeting, more than 30,000 bags of waste have been collected, while more than 21,000 residents have participated across the city in this important initiative. But this impressive achievement does not represent the standalone effort in the city of Johannesburg is embarking on to create a future without waste. While the United Nations has warned that we only have 12 years within which to limit climate change, failing which the world will experience an environmental catastrophe. 
it would appear that the city of Johannesburg is fortunate to have begun this work. In fact, in 2011, we developed the first integrated waste management policy with a vision to minimize waste to landfill, reduce carbon emissions, and explore waste conversion technologies to sustainably treat and dispose of our waste. For this, we partners with waste pickers, including them in the waste management value chain of the city, as well as developing waste recycling centers and encouraging waste separation at source at a household level. We, we then proceeded to amend the city's bylaws to make separation at source mandatory. It was through the implementation of those waste management measures that the city was able to regis register a 14% diversion of waste from landfills. The city has also registered and supported over 1,600 waste pickers to participate in our recycling program and has further concluded work on two waste to conversion technology feasibility studies. Once implemented, our biodigester will treat approximately 350,000 tons of biodegradable waste with methane gas extracted to compress to fuel the city's metro bus service. Our waste to energy project will treat and dispose of half a million tons of residual waste in order to generate about 25 megawatts of power. In addition to this, the city is already harvesting methane gas from three of our landfill sites with a projected electricity generation capacity of approximately 13 megawatts of electricity over a period of 20 to 25 years. The energy generated from the methane to energy is fed into the grid as green energy for use by the residents and businesses in our city. Fellow mayors, ladies and gentlemen, it is important to know that projects of this nature can only come into fruition when we as leaders get, in, get by in from our residents. That is why incentives, uh, uh, initiatives like Arisebetseng in Johannesburg or Umuganda in Kigali, Rwanda, are so crucial in creating the consciousness in our people that will lead to a widespread acceptance that climate change is indeed a concern for all humanity. What is required is decisive leadership and less delaying tactics. Ladies and gentlemen, for us in the developing world, 12 years is not exactly adequate enough time to reverse the negative effects of climate change. We are already living with the effects of climate change. The future without waste is actually now. As mayors and leaders of developing cities across Africa, we are intimately familiar with the unique priorities of our cities and our communities while keeping climate change and sustainable development top of our minds. As leaders in African cities, we are faced with the challenge of satisfying the immediate needs of our communities, including growing the economy and expanding access to basic services such as electricity, water, and healthcare, in order to keep our residents' anger at bay when the services appear to take too long. Our people are living in poverty and are seeking jobs to sustain their livelihood. But we have absolutely no choice but to take up the mantle of responsibility that comes with fighting climate change. If we fail to do so, we will be leaving the millions of people who call our cities home vulnerable to the ravages of environmental destruction. And us as the city of Johannesburg, we are committed to this very important project. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Mayor uh, from Johannesburg. Very good to hear you speak about this topic. And my name is Helena Molin Valdez. I'm working with the Climate and Clean Air Coalition. We have a very successful partnership with C40, working, among other things, on uh, waste management, municipal solid waste and diversion, especially, and on air quality. So thank you all for getting here a full room after this exciting morning here at C40 uh, Mayor Summit. Uh, in this deep dive session, we will hear a few outstanding examples and cities and what they are doing to take uh, action. We heard already from, from um, 
from Johannesburg with the purpose of sharing and moving forward together and get closer to the future without waste that we want and we all need. So, as you know, and we have uh, benefited from the recent big eye-opener for many people about the impact of plastic marine pollution. I think all of you have really noted this issue, right? Uh, but also the increased um, awareness about the huge food waste issues, turning waste into methane and, and greenhouse gases, among other things, but most importantly, contributing to global hunger instead of the opposite. Um, and also, of course, the rice recycling crisis that we have seen uh, across Asia, Canada, Sweden, Denmark and other places. But the, all of this has helped us. It has put waste management in the people's mindset like no other time in history. Maybe five years ago, six years ago, I remember David Newman in Iswa talking about waste to our climate change people and they looked at him not so convinced. I think now is our time uh, to, to really to take bold action on reducing, reusing, recycling and diverting waste from, from landfills and incineration. So cities, like, um, uh, cities and organizations like the C40 and the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, we are using this historical opportunity to raise ambition and to raise support as well to this pledge, uh, especially the one uh, called Advancing Towards Zero Waste Declaration that we will hear more about and the Breed Life Campaign. And we aim together to serve as a beacon of inspiration for more cities, governments and societies in general to follow in the same direction. So as we heard from Mayor uh, Mashaba from Johannesburg, uh, global waste generation is increasing rapidly and the sector can also help cities reduce their emission by up to 20%. This is huge, uh, but not Emission reduction is not the prime objective of managing waste properly. It's uh, public health, it's resource management, it's trash to treasure uh, opportunities. Uh, we can, in action, however, can lead to flooding, poor air quality, premature deaths, and many other health issues uh, and, and uh, disease, loss of resources, as I said, and many other severe problems. So today, with no further delay, we will hear from a few cities uh, at the forefront of the fight against climate change and how you, how they, are dealing and advancing on this collective mission of ours to uh, deliver a future without waste. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, our participants today and welcome first uh, Mayor James Kenny from Philadelphia. Please take your seat on this podium. So, Mayor James Kenny is, uh, has been a very progressive agenda in his city, and we will hear more about how this links up to the waste issues. May I also invite Mayor Washa, um, Wasim Akhtar from Karachi. Welcome, sir, all the way from uh, Pakistan. Let me also welcome Councillor Penny Halls from Auckland, New Zealand. Welcome. And finally, let me also welcome Mayor Lu uh, Luigi Brugnaro from Venice, my favorite city in Europe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm going to walk across here without falling. You can see I have fallen before. I walk carefully. <laughs> I fell just before coming here, so that's why I'm saying it. <laughs> so, excellent panel. And I, I love to see more a few women at the panel. That's very good. And I very strongly support the pledge of Mayor Anne Hidalgo for, uh, for these purposes. So I'm going to ask all of you the same question. Um, you know, just as a note, it's almost 30% of municipal budgets nowadays that are going to different types of waste management. It's quite a huge impact on the budget. So I want to ask all of you uh, about how you deal with the perception of most in the city that it's really the responsibility of the city government to deal with waste. Um, 
how do you think we can change this perception for citizens as well to share this responsibility uh, with actions like, for example, making more responsible consumer decisions, something we all need to do, produce less waste, which is the biggest challenge, separate better, and to support the service values that promote the diversion uh, and treatment over uh, disposal of waste. So, may I invite you, sure. Mayor? Can Hello, it to can start? Okay, thank you. Well, good afternoon, or good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. Um, the best way you can start to engage people in the in the issue of waste mm -hmm. is by b shedding a good example yourself as a city. Mm -hmm. um, so we've instituted waste audits in all, over 500 of, uh, 500 of our municipal buildings. Uh, we're engaging the, uh, the business community and the public. Uh, in how important this is. And, and when you say, like, when we speak in Philadelphia, you say, take this and throw it away. Mm -hmm. Well, you never really throw it away. You, you do something with it, but it's not thrown away because it doesn't go away. So we have to initially, I think, long-term engage our kids uh, in how important this is from their perspective. I remember growing up, my father was a firefighter, and when you grow up in a firefighter's family, there are certain things that are drilled into your head on a regular basis. An escape plan from the house, you know, checking the gas knobs on the, on the, on the range, pushing a button on the, on the smoke detectors to make sure the batteries are on. I remember doing that from the time I was a kid, and I still do it today. So if we can engage our kids in pre-K or kindergarten, and how important this is, and have a, have a, have a real consistent curriculum, in our school system as to how important they are in this process, we will begin to make dents in this. Okay. You know, grow, grow, again, um, I give old time stories, but growing up in South Philadelphia, um, before, on Saturdays, before you could go out and play, you had to go out with the rest of the moms and parents on the street and clean your street, and then you were released uh, for the day. Um, if I ever threw anything in, in the street in front of my mother, it, was, be a big, it would be a big deal, uh, and I'd get my ear pulled. Um, so it's, it's, engaging, it's engaging our kids in education, it's engaging our families to be responsible uh, examples to their kids, and it's also engaging the business community by setting a good example ourselves to engage them. Uh, and we intend to meet all of our commitments on waste reduction uh, in 2030. Thank you so much. That's a good example. And your city has, uh, as one of the most historical cities in the U.S., have also made this uh, very bold commitment towards the advancing towards their waste declaration. So congratulations, and we'll talk more about this soon. So, Mayor uh, from Karachi, Mayor Akhtar, how would you work with citizens and other players beyond the city to, to join this effort? Thank you. I think uh, uh, my case is uh, uh, very different uh, from all the mayors uh, present over here. Uh, first of all, uh, we had uh, this election of uh, municipality after 10 years in my city. And the city is of uh, about uh, 30 million population. Mm -hmm. Karachi is the largest city of Pakistan and I think uh, fifth largest city in the world. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the city is divided into uh, three areas, like uh, central government is uh, holding about 60% of the city, and uh, provincial government is holding about 30% uh, of the city. 10% goes to mayor of Karachi. 10%. <laughs> and, uh, 30 million people living in the city. We have uh, different kind of issues related to disposal of garbage, sewage system, transport, clean drinking water. The po point I want to make, it, make here is uh, I want uh, C40 to raise uh, these kind of issues which are faced by underdeveloped cities like uh, I, would, I want to take the name of Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. Uh, other cities may have, I think, achieved more than 50% or 70% on environment issues. But in our part of world, we cannot do much. I don't, I'm not criticizing the policy. 
of uh, my government. These are the facts. And I want C40 to look into it, to engage the central government, to engage uh, uh, the finance uh, uh, department bureaucrats, uh, and discuss these issues. We elected mayors want to do something on environment and other areas too. My city generates about 65% of the revenue uh, for federal government. My city generates 95% of the revenue for province. And mm -hmm. what I get, forget about the uh, environment, to do something for environment or climate change. I have about 14 hospitals. I cannot maintain those hospitals. So like these uh, situations, which never came, I think, uh, on uh, these C40 uh, summits, what I'm raising here, my, I have 35 large storm water drains. They're all choked with the garbage. 60% of the garbage is just is thrown in the uh, strong water drains. 40% garbage is, uh, uh, they, they take it to uh, the landfill sites. We don't have any system for the segregation, uh, garbage transfer centers. We don't have it uh, mm -hmm. uh, with such a big city uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, C40 should, uh, make special arrangements, special care on these kind of cities which don't have capacity uh, to build, they don't have management capacity to do something, they don't have financial, uh, uh, they have financial issues to uh, uh, take care of all these uh, issues related to climate change, related to environment. So, uh, uh, the picture which I have uh, given over here in front of all the mayors sitting here, uh, it's an alarming uh, situation in my city. Mm -hmm. And we have two ports in my city. So there should be something coming out. I, I'm going to see something coming out of C40. Some formula, some uh, you know decisions uh, to handle these kind of issues. Because uh, in center, there's another government in provincial uh, 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 government, there is another political government. And in third tier of government is run by me, my political party. So if we involve politics, we cannot resolve the issue. So my uh, suggestion or my request would be that this forum should raise a voice uh, to uh, uh, protect uh, climate change or environment in our cities uh, because, as I said, we want to work. Uh, but unfortunately, there is no clean drinking water, garbage everywhere. Uh, my sewage is collapsed. Uh, English people, when they left uh, Pakistan, uh, they gave us the system for about uh, 10 million people. Now it's 30 million people living there. And the political government, they, you know, uh, don't they don't care about uh, the city like uh, Karachi in Pakistan, the largest city, uh, which generate uh, revenue also for the uh, country. So maybe you will get some ideas also from the fellow panelists here, and your points are very well taken, and we'll definitely bring them forward to the C40. Let me invite your uh, uh, neighbor from Auckland, Penny. Please, maybe you can also give some some ideas to to the mayor of Karachi here, how you have engaged uh, with people, in addition to the political issues raised by him, but it's also an, a matter of, of how we manage waste and divert waste from, from the source and from the household, no? So. Um, first of all, kia ora koutou katoa from, from New Zealand, and I greet you in the language of our First Nations people, which is traditional for us from, from um, Aotearoa, New Zealand. 
Um, I absolutely, I, before I talk about us, I just need to acknowledge the impassioned plea from um, the man next to me. It, it's so hard coming from New Zealand, a country of 4.5 million people, a city of 1.7 million people, to even compare what we're doing um, with what what the challenges are in Karachi, and it feels a bit disrespectful to even offer some solutions. But I think somewhere embedded in this is the, the absolute critical nature of cities belonging to the C40 network. It's only by networking that we can help break down the size of the problems and come up with some solutions. And I think for the C40 network, there is a very big discussion in trying to understand the inequities that exist with some developing cities trying to do some of this work without national and international assistance to do that. So I think, Mayor, your points are well made. Just very, um, yeah, thank you. Well, in, in Auckland, we, we've taken very seriously the challenge around waste and we are aiming to be um, zero waste by 2030. So just very quickly, how do we make our citizens care? We are, you know, if anyone even knows where New Zealand is, it's sort of to the, to the right of Australia, right down in the, in the Pacific. Um, and we are, as the first city of the Pacific region, climate change is very live to us. We have islands that are no longer habitable because of sea level rise. So it's a very real thing. So the macro political level our community is very well engaged but how do we make people care on a daily basis we've got three ways of doing it number one through their pockets um, we have a pay as you throw policy so you pay you put out rubbish bags and you pay to do that if you want to save money you put out less rubbish and that's working really well and it's driving our, our waste um, levels down secondly we're involving the community who want to make a difference and we're setting up a little bit like South Africa um, the the ability to use community recycling centers and to celebrate people who who want to intervene and take the gold out of the out of the rubbish and we fund those and that's working really well because it's involving people but the third thing is trying to make our community not be the meat in the sandwich trying to work to change government policies so that the polluter pays that the producer of the plastic and the non-recyclable material pays in the first place and that the community then starts to drive the fact that they don't want to have to put out more and more rubbish because it's costing them the net result, and with a fantastic government that we've got, and our wonderful Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, we are starting to make impact with um, product stewardship costs, and I think that's going to be quite transformative. Thank you. Oh, very good advice. Thank you so much. Maybe I can, can just add uh, a fact here, in case you don't have it in front of you, that for every pound or kilo of waste that, in general, uh, we put out there, 70 kilos or pounds are produced upstream, which means that one bag thrown away means 60 bags, uh, 70 bags more during the production stream, during mining, manufacturing, packaging, distribution, and all what you said uh, before. So the problem is, of course, bigger than, than the city, but having that clear, I think, is an important point as well. So finally, Mayor from Venice, uh, some insights from your end, how to engage uh, public behavior and stakeholders together with the city in this issue. Thank you. Uh, thank you per, uh, for your invitation. Mm, my English is not no very good, so okay. uh, the, the, my friends trans translation, the, my, the, my, the my um, Intanto vi ringrazio per, per l'invito. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation to be here. Venezia è una città molto particolare e sarà ed è in prima linea per, per la resilienza sui cambiamenti climatici. Perché noi paghiamo in prima persona, forse insieme ad Ausland, eh, quello che succederà in futuro. I would like to say, first of all, that Venice is a very, very special city. We are in the front line uh, in the resilience to climate change, and we will pay in first person, maybe like our colleagues in uh, Oakland, the uh, consequences of climate change. La nostra è una città molto piccola. Um, gli abitanti sono del centro storico 50.000, e poi tutta la città sono 260.000 abitanti. Però abbiamo 
un numero di turisti molto elevato di qualche milione di persone all'anno per cui abbiamo questa, siamo in questo centro di rapporti internazionali che ci consentono e ci obbligano a organizzare un'industria, una vera e propria industria nella raccolta differenziata, nella raccolta della, di tutta l'immondizia che viene creata. Insomma. We are a rather small city actually. Our city center has about 50,000 people, but the city overall has about 260,000. However, we are certainly a tourist destination. We have a few million tourists per year, and therefore we are at the center of the international relations. We have a mandate. We are, uh, it's mandatory for us to really have a system in place to uh, collect and manage all the waste that is created. Noi pensiamo che la raccolta, la raccolta noi la facciamo casa per casa. Abbiamo, da quando io sono sindaco andiamo a raccogliere la spazzatura, suoniamo il campanello e raccogliamo la spazzatura a casa. E abbiamo fatto un grosso lavoro di eh, efficientamento eh, di pulizia della città. Laviamo e spaziamo la, la città a mano perché vogliamo che sia pulita e accogliente per tutti. We, since I've been the mayor, we have been collecting waste uh, door to door. So we actually go door to door, ring the bell and collect uh, waste uh, from each household. And we have worked tirelessly to make this uh, process efficient, to have an efficient uh, system in place. And we clean the streets by hand. We have uh, operators that go uh, street by street to make it clean and welcoming to everyone. Noi abbiamo delle barche dove puliamo anche tutta l'acqua superficiale, tutti i rifiuti superficiali che ci sono in acqua e grazie a un'azione volontaria di tanti cittadini, i gondolieri in particolare, facciamo anche un'attività di pulizia del fondo dei canali della città. <coughs> We also have boats that we use to clean the uh, superficial waste in the water, the one that is in the surface. And we also have many, many volunteers that help us in this process. For example, we have uh, gondoliers who volunteer as divers to collect the waste in the canals. Siamo la prima città in Italia per raccolta differenziata. Una delle, penso, delle più importanti del mondo in termini di qualità della raccolta differenziata. We rank number one uh, in Italy for waste sorting, and that is in terms of the quality of the waste sorting that we do, and I'm confident that it is one of the best in the world. La cosa importante è che questa raccolta avviene con la consapevolezza che poi il rifiuto ha una catena industriale nella sua trasformazione. Questo è un aspetto molto importante che adesso spiego velocemente. And this uh, sorting of waste actually happens with the awareness that this waste has a chain to transformation. So we know where it goes and what happens to it. A Porto Marghera è una grande area industriale che uh, fa parte della città di Venezia, è nella terraferma. C'è uno dei più grandi porti e in siti industriali europei. Um, in uh, Porto Maghera, which is an industrial area in the mainland, uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, ports actually, an industrial city in Europe. All'inizio del secolo si è inventata la plastica a Porto Marghera. A Porto Marghera è stata, nel, nei decenni, è, stato, è successo un disastro ambientale sotto il profilo chimico e, uh, e medico per le persone. Sono morte molte persone nell'industria chimica e abbiamo cambiato, abbiamo cambiato registro, abbiamo capito che quella non può essere la strada, dobbiamo disinquinare, dobbiamo disinquinare la terra, dobbiamo disinquinare il mare. E su Porto Marghera abbiamo investito moltissimo sulla trasformazione del, della, dei rifiuti urbani e questi diventano fonte di energia, fonte di risorse, se vengono appunto trattati bene. Uh, at the beginning of the century, plastics was invented uh, here in uh, Maghera, and uh, we uh, had industries, uh, chemical industries, that had an impact also on the health of people. So we can say there was actually a um, health disaster that happened. Many, many people died because of the chemical industry here, so we decided that we needed to change it all. And we decided to clean the port, clean the land, 
and we invested uh, substantial resources to uh, change the um, to transform waste into sources of energy and this is a clear uh, important uh, factor abbiamo abbiamo trasformato l'industria in un'industria green assieme alle grandi aziende italiane di chimiche abbiamo stiamo recuperando casa per casa l'olio fritto quello che usate per friggere è uno dei peggiori inquinanti dei mari. Noi lo recuperiamo e recuperiamo additivi per il biodiesel. E poi tutta la raccolta differenziata ci consente di costruire una filiera per la trasformazione dei rifiuti che ci consente poi di abbassare le bollette e restituire soldi ai cittadini. Per uh, esempio... We uh, have changed entirely the industry and we turned it to a green industry with the help of Italian chemical uh, industries. And, a, a, and um, an example that I want to give is cooking oil, so the oil that is used to fry. We collect it and we have to say that this is one of the worst ocean pollutant. And we collect that and we turn it into energy. And this helps uh, lower the utilities that citizens have to pay. So. Thank you so much. I think this was an excellent overview from the four of you. I just want now to give you another follow-up question, maybe starting from where you ended, uh, Mayor Bugnari, because you have a lot of tourists. You talked about millions of tourists per year in, on top of your own citizens. Can you give us an example of how you are trying to transform this beautiful city of Venice uh, in terms of getting the tourists less of a problem, there might be other problems than waste, but now we're talking about waste, so how can you give an example of this? Per noi i turisti non sono un problema. I turisti Good. sono persone, mm -hmm. persone curiose Good. che amano il mondo, amano la vita. Il turista è una persona che può essere mm -hmm. educato e ci può aiutare a comprendere gli effetti dei cambiamenti climatici. Mm -hmm. Venezia, noi vogliamo, mm -hmm. lo, lo farò pubblicamente, inviterò il C40 nei prossimi anni quando vorrà a fare questo convegno a Venezia e a Venezia dimostreremo come tutte le persone che vengono con rispetto di Venezia mm -hmm. rispettano il futuro dei giovani e i cambiamenti climatici devono essere spiegati ma devono essere anche risolti e li risolviamo con la scienza, con la ricerca, con la tecnica, con l'industria e con un grande percorso culturale. Un grande percorso culturale che parte proprio dalla conoscenza reciproca tra di noi. Il rispetto è la parola fondamentale per i prossimi anni. Dobbiamo rispettarci. In quel rispetto noi chiediamo ai turisti di venire per qualche giorno a Venezia, non per poche ore. Perché per capire un luogo così speciale c'è bisogno di tempo, c'è bisogno di calma, c'è bisogno di silenzio. Allora recuperiamo il rapporto con la natura. Non è urlando o protestando soltanto con i cartelli che risolviamo i problemi. I problemi vanno denunciati, ma vanno poi anche risolti. Bisogna metterci la faccia e tanto coraggio per risolvere i problemi. Mille grazie. I think we need translation yes. from many of the colleagues uh, here. I want to say that tourists... <laughs> Tourists are not a problem. Tourists are <laughs> curious people who love the world and love life. And tourists can be educated. They can help us understand the consequences of climate change. So I would like to invite uh, this C40 summit to actually take place in Venice, maybe in the next yes. uh, few years. Uh, and we can show you. And we can show you that if people come and uh, respect our city, respect Venice, uh, then uh, they're really respecting the future of young people, of future generations, so because climate change can be explained and can be solved using technology, using science. Uh, but first and foremost, it is a cultural journey. And the key word here is respect. We need to respect each other. So, for example, we would like tourists to come not just for a few hours, but for a few days, because to get to know our city it takes time and it takes calm and it takes silence. So this is the only way we can really take back our relationship with nature, with our environment. Uh, climate change is a problem of course and it needs to be solved and in order to do that we need to be brave thank you thank you very good so we we'll all go to venice soon um, so if i may go then to back to auckland you have been uh, one of the um, 
uh, pioneers in launching the, um, the advancing towards zero waste declaration. Uh, and quite, you gave us some very good advice on how to engage communities. Maybe you can tell us a little bit uh, more on, first of all, the targets of the waste declaration, if you want, which is quite bold to reduce waste uh, uh, by 15%, I believe, uh, in re reduce waste. I think this is a very important underlying uh, objective of this conversation. And then to divert it uh, from landfill or in or incineration. So, how do you communicate to your constituency and the business community on the multiple benefits of improving waste management so they support you in delivering on this? Please. Sure. So, just um, just quickly to run through what the declaration commitments are, and this is the advancing towards zero waste declaration commitments. It's reducing municipal waste um, generation per capita by at least 15% by 2030 compared to 2015, reducing the amount of municipal solid waste disposed to landfill um, or incineration by at least 50% by 2030 compared to 2015, and to increase the diversion rate away from landfill or incineration to at least 70% by, by 2030. So they are bold goals. Mm -hmm. But I think it's been said during the last couple of days, if you don't have bold goals, mm -hmm. you don't actually drive innovation. You've got to aim high, and then the cool stuff happens along the way if you, if you do that leadership. So just a few kind of hows that are happening with that. We found in Auckland that 45% of each of the rubbish bags that people put out every week is organic, in other words, compostable waste. So we're, um, just as I speak, my, my team are out there going through the procurement process to procure food waste collection. Um, Aucklanders are a little bit grumpy about that. It's yet another bin, but we've explained to them, um, and this is one of the fantastic sides of C40, we're leading the waste stream, as we say quietly, don't tell them, but we say we're leading the waste stream for the world, so therefore we can't, you know, we can't let people down. So that's managed it really well. Um, Two other quick things. We are also, as a growing city, um, we're growing quite rapidly by New Zealand standards and construction and demolition waste is a huge issue for us. So we've built into our procurement processes for, for council, and again, it was mentioned today that sometimes procurement processes can get in the way. We've used our um, council budget, which is a couple of billion dollars a year, as a, as a, um, a budget for good, and everything that we procure requires a zero waste component to it. And that's driving the demolition um, into a deconstruction series of industries, new green jobs for a whole bunch of people who wouldn't normally have jobs, and that's been incredibly successful. And just finally, the, um, the part that I'm most excited by is the community education side of waste. So this is joining with our communities via Marae, which is, um, again, for our, our Māori community. This is where they get together, have their meetings. The uh, communities are run from the Marae. Sorry, I don't know what the Italian word for Marae might be. Um, but it's taking that education for young people and for, for our First Nations community out there to where people meet and make change and making that connection because in the Māori world, the link between environment and well-being is absolutely indivisible. So to manage the earth well manages the community well, and that's been an incredible partnership for us and is critical. So before moving to back to Karachi, I would like to invite you, Mayor Kenny, because I think you can build on this fantastic um, example given by New Zealand and Auckland, sorry, not New Zealand, Auckland, very important, um, and, and give us a little bit more uh, ideas on how you communicate. Okay. First, first of all, I'd, I'd like to vote C for Venice for the next... Okay. <laughs> Venice. Okay. I'm, all, I'm all for it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we ran into a little bit of a hiccup with our recycling. Um, people got a little lazy uh, and started throwing everything in the recycling bin, all stuff that's contaminated with food waste, and, and, and we had some issues with, I think a Chinese, the Chinese were taking our, our, uh, our recyclables and then were, were balking at the fact that we was so contaminated that they didn't want to take it anymore. So it kind of, kind of brought us home to Jesus a little bit as, as to how we have to now go re-educate folks on how stuff goes in the, in the bin, what doesn't go in the bin, uh, and how, how you can better 
uh, deal with your deal with your tr daily trash and engage those folks. Uh, the mayor also mentioned um, short dumping of construction debris. It is one of the most annoying and prevalent things that we see in the city. We've actually put a two detective police unit uh, on short dumpers so that when we have a short dump situation, actually two police detectives go out and sort through it, try to find out where it came from. We will arrest people that do it. We just fired. Believe it or not, we had two sanitation workers who must have took a, took a little money from one of these contractors and short dumped it in, in, on the street in front of a camera. Um, they're no longer working for the city, um, so good riddance. Uh, but we really need to start better handling how we deal with people who are doing construction. The large construction sites, the large, the large developments don't have that problem. They have dumpsters, they deal with it. But the dumpsters should not be dumped in the landfill either. Most, if not all, that's recyclable. Uh, and can be put back in, in, into place. It's the smaller developers that are building two and three houses that, you know, or, or a guy, a, a, a resident that's doing home repairs that, you know, doesn't want to just takes it somewhere and dumps it because they don't want to pay for the, for the, to dispose of it uh, the, the right way. So we have to re-evaluate how we educate our people on recycling and, and to make it more effective. I think we have a new contract coming up uh, with, the with the person to take our recycling uh, uh, recycling product, uh, and um, we, have, we have to do a better job with our folks going forward. Very good. So we talk here about incentives, education, community education, enforcement, and actually having polluter pay uh, in many ways, no? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, w I would like to trace it back to the actual contractor. Yeah, the contractor. And, yeah. and arrest them. Okay. Uh, and, and get them before a judge. He's a <laughs> the next police officer, the no, next no, police no. chief. No, of, no, no, of no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Look, uh, I think um, we are having 10 more minutes of this panel, and uh, you, Mr. Mayor Akhtar from Karachi, you raised some really fundamental issues when you did your first intervention, and maybe now coming back to you at, at closing the panel, uh, you are in, as you said, you have a huge uh, population, you have huge political issues beyond waste, you talked about budgetary issues and the distribution of, of income between uh, federal or national and, and local governments. These are very important issues, and I'm sure C40 will uh, continuously seek to bring this to the forefront. If you bring this now to the topic of, of waste and some lessons learned, how can you avoid some of the, the, the pitfalls, let's say, on managing the waste mountains, because that is an issue, I'm sure, also for your city. Maybe you can take us, give us some ideas of, of how you plan to work with local or regional or other authorities to support you in your big challenge now to, to deal also with Karachi's waste. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, let me tell you that uh, the area of uh, my city is about 3,600 uh, square kilometer. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, uh, these all functions uh, doesn't come under mayor, mm -hmm. uh -huh. like disposal of garbage, sewage system, water, transport. These all uh, functions are with the Sindh government. Okay. And they are disposing of about 60%, 40% of the garbage from uh, GTS to landfill site, and 60% uh, of the garbage are just thrown in the different uh, stormwater drains. And about uh, 680 raw sewage is uh, dumped into the sea. So the, this is the situation I am in. Uh, but as a mayor, everybody looks at me, uh, asks me uh, for everything. Mm -hmm. So what uh, can I do? I am working on it. I am uh, doing a plantation in my city. I have banned the plastic bags. Uh, in my city, and I am engaging the youth uh, of my city uh, for the awareness. Uh, I'm going to the schools, to the colleges, and uh, you know, engaging them uh, regarding the disposal of the garbage and how to uh, have a good environment. So this, uh, what can I do? Uh, I can, I can do. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> That's all. And I think we can all give an applause for that. <laughs> And, and for the youth who has been constantly quoted by all the decision makers of the world, uh, including at the Climate Action Summit a few weeks ago in New York, 
we cannot also put all the eggs on the youth's responsibilities, right? So I think that what we are doing here and what you described, Mayor, uh, and, and all of you spoke about is how, how education and youth and new generations are the real agents of change, but it's actually us and our generation. I may be the older generation here, but the different generations, we all need to, to, to do our part. And the fact that we need to have a more circular economy or, or reuse resources, and we heard from Venice a similar problem on, on, on dumping everything in the sea and, and chemicals, uh, poisoning people, etc. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a regulatory issue, it's an awareness issue, and it's also responsibility of the producers. As we said, 70 times of the waste mountain comes upstream before it reaches us, right? So diversion, 25% of the greenhouse gases that uh, contribute to global warming comes from methane, not only CO2 actually, 25%, it's a lot. And methane is produced by organic waste, among other things. So I, it's not a small issue when it comes to climate change. It's a big issue, but it's also a big issue for health. It's a big issue for resource management and for the future of the planet. So. Uh, there is actually five more minutes, so, so there is one question, I've been told. Uh, is there a question? We have one question here in the front. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to stand up without falling down, don't worry. Uh, it's David Newman. I quoted you in the beginning here. The, the key to waste management is to get food waste collected and treated, yet nobody outside a few wealthier countries is doing this. Food waste can produce energy and compost, uh, compost, but also reduce methane and black soot emissions. Why is food waste treatment not top of the agenda? Who wants to respond to this from the panel? <coughs> Mayor um, Kenny. And I'll, I'll go back to when I was a kid. When I was a child, we had pig farmers from New Jersey that would come over and pick up the buckets of waste that we leave out. So you didn't put stuff down at garbage disposal. You put it in a, t in, a, in a small bucket. And that bucket went out on a different day, a different trash day. And then the farmers would come over with their, tru their, their, uh, their trucks and dump all the garbage, and uh, the food waste, and then feed, go out back and feed the hogs. Um, mm. Part of the problem why it's not done now is that I think that people um, have garbage disposals, which I don't think are, are, is really good for the environment either, uh, because we can generate energy from that waste if we compost it. So in Philadelphia, we're, uh, we're finishing up uh, wor our work on a, on a proposal uh, to accept re responses for a composting contract. Anyone else wants to add to this? Can I just make a, a very quick observation? I think... Um, it should be right top of the agenda because not only is it criminal that food waste disappears into landfill, it's just an obscenity, but it starts people thinking about how that food waste is generated and once you start to actually put a cost on waste, you do things like the projects with supermarkets, giving food to homeless shelters to really start that circular economy going and valuing food. So it should be top of mind. It should be valued up appropriately financially. There should be dis, um, incentives to dumping food waste. And most importantly, it absolutely needs to be kept out of landfill. It's one of those tough political decisions, but it's the next tough political decision to make. It's absolutely critical. A third of food is thrown away but that is when we buy it, after we have bought it. Before that, there is a huge amount of food loss from the farmer to the shop. So it's more than half of food that's being thrown away. And this is in a world where we still have billions of people going hungry every day. So this is actually a moral imperative and part of the sustainable um, uh, development goals as well to, to, towards zero hunger. So waste to, to tr trash, to treasure. We heard the Rotterdam mayor, for those of you who were in the plenary, saying that in, in uh, Rotterdam now, 
trash is gold. All the trucks are painted in gold color, and it says gold transport. And I think that's a, a mindset. And we talked first about the behavioral change, starting with young people, but also our generation are capable of change, no? So if we understand this as a treasure rather than as only a problem, that's part of the solution. And you have all given us many examples of how noi, this happens. Noi so last, noi last word to Venice. No, noi stiamo facendo proprio così. A Marghera trasformiamo i rifiuti, li facciamo diventare un vantaggio. Eh, Caraci, per convincere Caraci non c'è solo un tema etico, c'è un tema economico. Deve diventare vantaggioso utilizzare i rifiuti. I rifiuti eh, gestiti bene possono essere la prossima grande ricchezza. Con la trasformazione industriale il rifiuto diventerà una ricchezza per i cittadini che ne avranno. Per cui il tema oggi del rifiuto è da vederlo in chiave anche economica. Uh, that's what we do actually in Maghera, so we transform waste into energy, we transform waste into something, into a resource. And I think that Karachi could do that, so it's not just about uh, education, but it's also about uh, understanding how waste can be a resource, an economic resource. Uh, and that's uh, one way that you can engage as well. Big, big, grand resource, big yes. resource, a refute. That you can manage locally despite having uh, your national or regional authorities in charge of waste management. So I don't want to say any more because I'm watching the clock and we are already a few minutes over the time. But I thought this was a very thoughtful panel. Thank you to C40, thank, thank you to everybody who came and thank you to, to, to the mayors here. Thank you. And the last word is, please join the declaration to advance towards zero waste and breed life, of course. Air quality is tomorrow. Thank you.